heard a lot of people were saying a lot of stuff about China. China, with their whole chests that they didn't have solid citations for. That's what's going on. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that there were plenty of warnings the entire time. Because every time I've talked about China, every time I've talked about the Uyghurs, there's always been this sense of like, is this actually true? And then people are like, well, it's coming from this one guy, and he's sort of full of shit about everything. And you're like, uh-oh. And that's a little reductive. But it seems as though, like, Western narrative about China doing genocide to Uyghurs is not is just falling apart. They're, like, sort of shamelessly backpedaling. Um, I could be wrong. Again, I don't know what's going on in China. That's what I'm getting at, is that so many people act like they do. And it's fucking annoying. As somebody who's, like, actually trying to figure out what's going on in the world, to have people acting like they know what's happening when it's not happening, dude. Stop acting like you know shit that's not real. Let's stop pretending, everybody. Ugh. Drives me nuts. Because it, like, really confuses the shit out of me. Who do I take seriously? Ugh, it's hard. This is Q. This is Andre Domi saying, Are you telling me I got called a genocide denier for this? A barbed wire. This is AP reporting. This is AP reporting. The barbed wire is almost gone. So are the armored personnel carriers. Young Uyghur men are back on the streets. Beijing is slackening its grip on Xinjiang after a brutal mass detention campaign, but fear remains pervasive. <laughs> I don't... I'm just... You should be very skeptical of that. You should be very skeptical of that. Here's our friend, Horse Show. Sounds like Washington's desperately backpedaling. Another friend, Carl. Why should people trust corporate media, capitalist radio, uh, media, racist media, pushing an anti-China narrative? China bad, right? That's what the media says. China bad. All right. So, you saying, are you telling me I got called a genocide denier? For this. All for all this. We're just sort of backpedaling, right? No, seriously. How do you just run with a lie? Uh... For this many years, smear people who point out both the glaring inconsistencies and the conflicted interests behind it, and then just be like, yeah, I guess it's over now. Once enough tourists in the region see the truth for themselves. Happened the same way in Cuba in the summer. Create a spark of a narrative, push and see how much steam it can get. Unfortunately, literally how it always plays out, we anti-imperialists spot the lies, get slandered to shit for it, the culprits pushing regime change and atrocity propaganda pretend nothing happened. Once the lie becomes untenable, and yet the damage is done. We got, we got, um, let's see here. We keep going back. And then we got this guy going. Certified anti-fascist. Detox the left. I want you to check, that, check out this cursed discourse. Do I not have a cursed discourse button? I need a cursed discourse button. Damn it. I'll just have to click world news. It's not. I guess world news. I don't even know what to fucking do. Anyways, the guy goes, a lie? This is so fucked. This is the definition of genocide denial. No, dude, only if there's a genocide happening, bro. If he's denying a genocide that's not happening, it's not gen genocide denial. It's just Acknowledging reality? Report this tweet. Report this tweet. Report this tweet. Look at who he's followed by. I always find this interesting. Report this tweet. I'm a certified anti-fascist. A lie. This is so fucked. Report it. He wants to fucking... Like, censor... And Andre Domis for just disagreeing. But don't listen to me, he says. Listen to the many dedicated researchers and journalists. Most of all, to the victims and their families. 
If you casually deny this genocide, you're spitting in the face of these people. So I responded. Is it also spitting in their faces if you casually claim there's a genocide when there isn't? The kind of the, the problem is with this guy. The problem is with this guy and people like him is that they act like they know things that they don't really know. They're pretending. Hey, we got a house of dub raid. Perfect time. We're talking about China discourse. <laughs> Hey friends, if you're with me already, give House a dub a follow. Friend of mine, musician, ra uh, streamer, raider. Hello, raiders. It me, Dan. We're talking about China discourse. You know how China's bad? Wait, I'm sorry. You know how the media says China's bad? <laughs> hey guys. You know how the media is saying there's like a genocide happening in China? You know how there's like a lot of people are like, there's a genocide, and they don't really know because they're acting like they know things that they don't really know. They're pretending to know things that they that aren't actually true. Well, guess what, dude? It's it it doesn't seem to be happening. And and then and then this guy's like, if you say that you're a genocide denier, report this tweet and detox the left. He's fucking projecting everybody. He is the toxic element here, pretending to know things he doesn't know. That is toxic. That is not left. And of course, yeah, who said it? Why, Quinn. Quinn says, why, quote, why I left the left, CIA imperialist edition. This guy's going to be an ex-leftist in like days here. Just give it time, right? He acts like he knows shit that he doesn't know. CIA doing also doing a China bad. As CIA warns, China is most important threat to the United States. Is Biden pursuing a new Cold War? What the fuck, dude? So, democracy now doesn't really do a good job of reporting on China. In fact, I think they may have reported on the Uyghur genocide. Uh oh, oh, here's the truth. I I look at democracy now every day. I believe that they mess up, and I'm gonna call them out on it if I see it. I sort of have a feeling that they've reported on 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 this, and they've sort of called it a genocide, but I could be wrong. Uh, democracy now doesn't really do a good job reporting on China. They sort of do a China bad. They sort of, they arguably parrot CIA propaganda as well. I'm, I'm really, I'm really interested here. Uyghur protests widen as Xinjiang unrest flares. That's reporting from 2009. Here they are reporting in 2018. Re-education camps, infiltration, surveillance. China criticized over persecution of Uyghur Muslims. Ooh. Folks, I'm showing this not because I think this is good coverage. I'm showing you this because I think it's going to be bad. Okay, here we go. I'm fascinated. This is Democracy Now. I am fascinated. Org, the Warren Thank Peace you, Polly Report. Nikes. I appreciate that. Goodman. And I'm Nermeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. This is 2018. U.S.-China trade relations remain one of the world's top stories this week. On Saturday, President Trump and Chinese she gonna take President over when Xi Jinping Amy met at the G20 summit in Argentina and agreed to a 90-day truce in the ongoing trade war between the two countries. But tensions remain high. On Tuesday, Trump threatened to impose new tariffs, tweeting, quote, I am a tariff man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> I really wish I was covering news and politics every day when Trump, uh, 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 when Trump was president. He says the funniest things, dude. I am a tariff man. Move shook the world's financial markets. Meanwhile, authorities in Canada have arrested <laughs> a top Chinese executive at the request of the U.S. government. Meng Wanzhou, the chief financial officer of the telecom giant Huawei, oh, right. now faces extradition to the United States on unknown charges, Look at them, possibly dude. alleged violations of U.S. sanctions against Iran. 
She is the daughter of Why Huawei's are they saying father. that? Democracy now does all of the China bad, dude. I can't believe this, what I'm hearing. While Trump's meeting with Xi Jinping focused on trade, it's unclear if the two leaders discussed another major issue in China. The United Nations and a number of human rights groups have accused the Chinese government of setting up large re-education camps in the far west Xianjing province to hold an unknown number of ethnic Uyghurs and other Muslims. Some estimates put the population at the camps up to two million. On Wednesday, UN Human Rights Commissioner Michelle Bach Are you fucking kidding me here? Are you kidding me here? Two million people. Oh, yeah, maybe two million people are being held in camps. How about you have a fucking shred of evidence before you say that? Chalet requested permission to visit the camps. We have been asking us, I think I mentioned to you. By the way, if you hate millions of people being in camps, I hate to tell you about the prison industrial complex we have in this fucking country. Before, uh, for direct access to the region to be able to check and verify the worrying reports that we're receiving. We have also offered technical assistance to the government on addressing threats posed by violent extremism. Uh, so, in a way to sort of ensure the protection of human rights. So, so we wish to engage China in a serious dialogue on this pressing matter. After months of denials, the Chinese government acknowledged the existence of the camps in October. That's when the local government in Xinjiang changed its laws to formally allow the formation of what they call, quote, vocational skill educational training centers to, quote, carry out anti-extremist ideological education. Satellite images show that dozens of these camps have been built in recent years. For years, China's cracked down on the Uyghurs and other Muslim groups. In 2017, officials in Xinjiang banned men from wearing beards, women from covering their faces, and homeschool. Xinjiang has also become a high-tech surveillance state. Video what, what are your cameras takes? What are you pulling from this, y'all? recognition software track everyone's movement on the streets. All vehicles must have GPS trackers. Checkpoints are set up throughout the region, where police scan people's irises and phones. China's defended its actions, saying the measures are needed to prevent Xinjiang from becoming what one Chinese official described as China's Syria or China's Libya. We're joined right now by Rushan Abbas. She's a Uyghur American activist based in Washington, D.C. Yeah, Ross. After she spoke State out against Department China's propaganda. repression of the Uyghurs earlier this year, her aunt and sister disappeared what? and have not been— China admits it! Stop it, dude! Muius, are you new to the channel? Uh, here we go. Um, I'm going to insist that you read the rules. Otherwise, I don't think I can take you seriously. Yeah. You're not entirely sure what's true or false here. I think that's sort of the point. Like, we don't really know. But what's happening is democracy now and other people are, like, pushing this narrative that up to two million people are being held in, in camps. Holy shit. Two million without a shred of evidence. So we don't really know what's true. But is that true? Is there good reason to believe that's actually true right now? Uh, especially when the people who are peddling... Uh, uh, the media people who are uh, the people in media who are peddling this are now walking back uh, those claims. Oh well, now they're shutting down the 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 barbed wires all down. Oh come on! There's like tourists in the area checking it out, and they're confirming that it's not happening. That's what's happening. So they have to walk it back. You know what? That's me acting like I I know things I don't really know. All right. Go back to it. Heard from since. Her recent piece for The Washington Post is headlined, My aunt and sister in China have vanished. Are they being punished for my activism? Thank you so much for joining us, Roshana Bass. Um, if you can start off by saying, have you heard anything at this point, uh, even from other family members, what you believe has happened to your family, and also the situation right now for the Uyghurs in China? Yeah. Same, smart night. I have not heard anything about the disappearance of my sister and my aunt. Uh, I was one of the uh, speakers at Hudson Institute, one of the think tanks in Washington, D.C., on September 5th. What is the Hudson Institute?
The Hudson Institute understands something that's very important. American leadership is indispensable to the advancement of freedom. Hudson is an American think tank providing cutting edge policy work on national security, economics, foreign policy, and on U.S. domestic policy. I'm so proud of what Hudson continues to accomplish. Hudson's been at the forefront of policy development for decades. I regularly rely on Hudson Institute scholars to help inform my thinking and the way I help shape policy here in the Senate. Our analysis and recommendations. Senator Tom Cotton. <laughs> here in the Senate. Our analysis and recommendations have never been in greater demand by the U.S. government and by governments around the world. If your mind's not we being blown, you're sort of not paying attention. To that's okay. Maybe you're checking in and out. And how to meet them effectively. Holy For shit. For more than dude. half a century, this institute has dedicated itself to advancing global security, prosperity, and freedom. You've always advanced that vital truth that American leadership lights the way. We operate differently from most other think tanks in looking at the evolution of threats and beginning with the biggest challenges, whether it be Japan, India, France, Germany, Americans and our allies want to better understand the dangers of the future and the options for reducing those dangers. I want to thank the Hudson Institute, who is not testifying here today, but has been a very powerful force. Across party lines, Democrats and Republicans, you're seeing this emerging consensus around a much more vigorous, aggressive posture towards China. One of the things that gives us trust in Hudson's perspective is that it's not one singular perspective. China poses uh, a series of, uh, of new challenges um, and that the status quo uh, was really not sustainable. The policy of economic cooperation has simply given communist China the resources to compete with the United States on a global scale, all while they continue to nationalize industries, steal from U.S. companies, deny basic human rights, violently suppress dissent, and pursue policies of religious oppression. The, the global economic consequences of the coronavirus are probably deeper and more profound than we realize. The Chinese Communist Party may be the single greatest challenge our nation has ever confronted uh, and poses extraordinary challenges across the economic, the military, and the political domains. We are dedicated to seeing what is different in the threats and opportunities of the future and how to make the trends bend to the security and prosperity of America and its allies. It is time for all nations to join us in holding Iran to a new level of accountability for its destructive behavior. And neither the Chinese nor the Russians um, share our commitment to freedom. Hudson remains an influential group in American foreign policy and needed today more than ever before because no one up here has ever dealt with the world like the world is today. So much of our influence in the world has come from the fact that we've been a model, an inspiration to others, a power that others want to emulate. We have proved for nearly 250 years that capitalism works. As Americans, we cannot give up on the values that made us the envy of the world. We must put those values to work once again, and we are today. And while we renew our economy at home, we must proudly promote our principles abroad. Hudson Institute is blessed to have experts with the intellectual courage to question what everybody says, and even rethink fundamentals. It takes strength to stand alone at times. This has been the essence of Hudson Institute since 1961, and remains the basis of our service to America and America's allies. That explains a fucking lot, now doesn't it? Yeah. That is off the charts. That's some jaw-dropping shit.
Hey YouTube, you're watching a clip from my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Simpson, where you can follow for free and subscribe for only $5 a month. Thanks for watching.